Hey guys, welcome back to the cyber hack. Today, I just want to go over what I did as a small project just to test the waters to see how it actually works. Now, I know this is not a ChatGPT versus Olama, but the one thing I do want to point out is that I would never do this on ChatGPT, even though I really want to. Now, you could probably dumb it down and water down your resume and, and omit a lot of personal information. But I would not use ChatGPT in the fashion that I will use this process with Olama. So let me just explain a little bit more of what I did. So over the last couple of days, I was like, I'm getting bored, I'm getting restless. I don't want to just sit there and read all day because then you lose touch with all your hands on stuff, right? So from a technical perspective, I was like, hey, I have a few machines laying around. I have a 3070 Ti that's not doing anything right now. Uh, I've done this before in the past where I've installed Olama on a Ubuntu machine and I ran it and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool, right? But, you know, I was trying to dig a little deeper and saying, hey, let me make full use or the, utilize this full potential to do something positive for me instead of just playing around and asking Olama, like, what's two plus two and things like that, right? Of course, you can get a little more extravagant, have it code stuff for you and do all this other fascinating things that you would probably take years to learn and you have it at your fingertips and in matters of seconds. So uh, one thing I wanted to say is, yes, I'm so intrigued. I love hardware. I love GPUs. I used to be a miner and I've done all that and I still have equipment laying around that I don't even know what to do with that I have so much. And I've also have things that people have donated to me because I was part of the community. So anyway, long story short is that now I have all this other equipment to do these new technology things outside of crypto. Uh, although you can still probably use it for crypto. I've actually used Olama and ChatGPT to tell it to create me a new crypto meme coin, which I have not done. I was just uh, intrigued to see the, the, the coding and the process behind it. It will actually lay out everything for you. But that's not the scope of this story today. What I want to share, share with you guys today is that um, first things first, I want to show you guys this. Now, this is a, a live shot of my current Olama setup. It's a Ryzen 7. Uh, let me see. I kind of forget right now. Let me just double check right now. It's a Ryzen 7. Uh, oh, Ryzen 7 3800X. It has 64 gigs of RAM, I believe, right now. Yes, 64 gigs of RAM. Um, I'm actually looking at a, a side machine and I'm just kind of giving you guys the specs. So I do have a 3070 Ti right now. And it's more than sufficient to run what it is that I'm trying to accomplish here. So, so with that being said, I want to show you the details of what I actually did. So one thing I, I went over was this over here. Uh, this is the the actual uh, instructions or the how to that I kind of went by and I and I thought it was one of the greatest ones uh, as far as the full detail screenshots and whatnot. Uh, shout out to Mr. Yang over here and uh, this was dated back in July 19. So it wasn't that long ago and it's pretty relevant and still accurate as of today of, of course because it's not dated yet. So and you went through the full details of this, how to do it on Windows and uh, how to do it on Docker is downloading Docker and then installing a llama. And then, of course, you know, checking your resources and then also installing because I'm using a 3070 Ti, I'm using the, the CUDA drivers from NVIDIA, which is utilizing the GPU as opposed to the CPU, because this CPU isn't that, I guess, um, up to par in today's standards as far as processing power. So of course the GPU is definitely a, uh, a better alternate solution to that. And of course the instructions for all that is ran through this particular website. And I, I believe this is Mr. Yang right here. Uh, unless I am, mean, it's probably just AI generated, but anyway. And right now, let me just say, yeah. So the, the CUDA toolkit and okay. All right, I'm gonna get to the, the, the meat of this conversation, the meat of this video, that the whole topic and the whole point of this why, how, and what does this even relate to cybersecurity and landing a job? Well, let me get to that right now. So I want to show you guys, well, this is the interface, right? 
this is coming off my other machine because I was able to, you know, uh, uh, host it off this, the host machine, which is the one that I just showed you guys, which is this setup. And I'm, I'm utilizing it back on the machine here. And of course, my video will take a little second. Hey, there I go. And I, you know, you can ask a million questions uh, like here, for example, I actually asked it how to build a crypto token, uh, how to ace a job interview. I even went as far as asking it to play, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, poker with me. And it was pretty crazy. It was wow. I deleted it, but you know, it, it went really hardcore into shuffling the cards, dealing me the, the, the two cards uh, on a, a Texas Hold'em poker. I had the two cards. It told me one card that it had faced up and one card that was face down. So the the intensity, the the intellect of Olama right now. Now I'm not saying that ChatGPT can't do any of this. They can, but right now, just you, you have to keep in mind, as a cybersecurity professional, this information is this information all private. Oops, private. And that is the key difference. ChatGPT is out on the web. Whether you pay for the service or you don't, you use the free service. I do both. I, I do pay for ChatGPT because I wanted to utilize ChatGPT 4.0. And this is right now, Olama is only within my realm, my host, my local network. It's not publicly uh, available. It's not you know on the internet. So a lot of the information that I'm posting on here is contained to me. And if I shut down this host, that's it. That information is no longer available outside of this little network. So of course you can ask this information and this is what it produces. So let me get to the core of all this right now. So I took a job description and right now this is the one that I was focused on. It was a senior practice manager in cyber resilience, right? And I, and I told Olama specifically that I'm going to give you a job description and then I'm also going to give you my resume. I want you to compare my resume to this job description and then give me a percentage of what you think or if I qualify for this position or not. And the great thing about this was that it did give me a percentage. Then it broke down exactly where I was strong, where I can improve and the recommendations that it's telling me that I can actually go further and possibly get this job right so that's that's one of the wow like it, like how much better can that get like a personal assistant a personal really a smart assistant that can advise you and tell you exactly where you need to improve on so you can actually improve it right so it's as simple as that so let's go over some of the details here uh, here's a breakdown of the strength and the areas of improvement. So it says I have leadership, uh, leadership experience, cybersecurity knowledge, business, and strategic thinking. And then it tells me the area of improvement, consulting experience. I do have a lot of consulting experience. I may not have illustrated that on my resume, but, but when Olama looked at it, it didn't sense any of it. So I did not put probably enough of the keywords or the terminologies or bullet points within my experience that I have consulting experience. Because apparently the position for this, the senior practice manager in cyber resilience is a consulting company. So, all right, so, so maybe a little tweak here and there may be needed in order to kind of prop this overall score a little higher. And then it also goes that, you know, a master's degree, I don't have a master's degree. I have a bachelor's degree. Uh, I don't know. It, it says a job requirement pref prefer a master's degree. It doesn't say that it's required. So it prefer means, hey, you have it. It's a little notch that, that in your favor. I was like, okay. Now I can't fake that. I'm not going to put a fake master's degree or claim that I'm taking master courses right now or in school for anything, uh, because that's honestly, I prefer at this point in time, because I've been in, in this profession for so long now that I would probably just take another certification to compensate for that lack of a master's degree. Now, is it necessary to have a master's degree? I feel like master's degree 
to some extent may be beneficial, but as a very niche topic as far as cybersecurity, experience is key. And a degree is probably not going to land you that next role because of it, because you have this master's degree, right? So that's just my opinion. People look at it differently, like, hey, I, I'm studying this. I'm not here to knock you if you're taking master's degree. Oh, trust me, because I've considered taking it myself. Uh, it was more of a self-improvement, uh, self-enlightenment, uh, just to prove to myself. And I'll be like the first person to have a master's degree in my, in my family or immediate family. Uh, it's just a, a self-accomplishment kind of a thing. But I never went that route. So I'm going to omit everything that I just said. <laughs> So, and then, uh, of course, Olama gave me some recommendations. Emphasize consulting experience, right? And update your education section. Now, like I just said, I don't have a master's, nor do I have any intentions. If you don't have it, and it tells you, if you don't have a master's degree, focus on highlighting irrelevant coursework or certifications that show your commitment to ongoing learning and professional development. That is awesome. That means I can talk the talk as long as I know what I'm talking about in order to get this position. Then, of course, I started asking other questions like, hey, how can I improve my chances of this role during the HR screening call? And there you have it. It just goes into full details as to what you should focus on. And, of course, this is very high level. You can keep on going at Olama or even ChatGPT to get more information as you dig deeper and deeper, as you're asking more detailed questions, as it's giving you these high level, uh, very like broad statements or answers, you can dive a little deeper. And what I've noticed with both ChatGPT and Olama is that as you're diving deeper, it kind of just submits to you and it starts providing you a little more detail. And the way you ask the question will be, uh, you know, it, it will actually start processing it more and start thinking more and, and starts giving you alternatives to on top of what the, it has already said, right? It may or may not kind of repeat. Not everything is 100% accurate. Make sure you fact check all that. Like don't don't listen to every little thing it says. It's almost like uh, go Google Maps, right? If you, you know, drive a course and somehow there's constructions, you can't always rely on that. You have to use some common sense. If you see the road and it's being blocked off by construction and Google's map is telling you to go straight ahead, you can't always do that, right? You kind of have to inject your human thoughts in it uh, pretty often, actually. You have to analyze it on top of whatever AI tells you or whatever this application is telling you. So I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, if you guys have interest on how I actually put all this together and, you know, more details as far as the hardware and, and um, I, I do plan on expanding this, this uh, you know, AI generated or Olama project that I have right now. I was planning to go pick up another GPU um, because right now, you know, the things that I'm asking it is not fairly... Uh, complicated it's not complex it's not really large it's not a large model that i'm asking i'm not telling to program me a write a code that that mimics amazon's um you know the retail environment so you know i, I don't need that the entire processing or extreme processing but my point is that when I need to call for that information, uh, just having additional resources. And plus, I love buying technology, unfortunately. I, I do spend a lot uh, on uh, GPUs in the past. And uh, this has given me another reason. Even though I have offloaded a lot in the past, uh, some of the ones that I did buy, I have AMD cards, I have NVIDIA cards. I did offload them. I did, you know, and then I, I just, I haven't picked up any of the new 40, uh, 4000 series. Oh, even though now it's like the 5000 series about to be released every year. So it's like a new iPhone or something like that. But anyway, I'm um, going off topic. So uh, that that's my little uh, tip for today. If you guys want to get your hands dirty, uh, you know, on the technical aspect, build yourself a Llama machine. You don't need top notch equipment. You can even run a Llama machine off a 1660 Super, which I have. Uh, that's a GPU if you don't know what that means. 
And the because the the computation, the processing power behind all this, uh, they're, they're fairly simple. Like you, you're just asking question, you're asking to analyze something, and you're providing the information. It's not like you're giving it formulas that are scientific or it's rocket science. So, you know, having minimal requirements is probably anything that you're working off of now could even run Olama, uh, even for the one of the smaller models. So you can actually go on the Olama website. Of course, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that. I just have interest in doing things like this. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Hopefully this helped you uh, and probably uh, made a, a good weekend project one of these days for you to uh, throw your resume in there, put in a bunch of job descriptions uh, or current job postings and see how much you qualify. And then tweak it to increase the percentage because then the AI knows what it's looking for because it's comparing it to the job description. So pretty much the same as what other companies are doing by utilizing AI to compare your resume to see if you actually qualify for this position. Wow, that is crazy, right? So I want to thank you all and please remember to hit that like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again really soon. Take care.